So there you can see those wires go down into that compartment, connects to the black box, transducer comes up through here and then out that rod holder hole right there. What's going on and welcome back if you're new around here. My name is TJ Erickson. I teach and guide in beautiful Park Rapids, Minnesota. Today we're gonna to talk about a question that I get asked quite a bit, especially when we start getting into this open water season. And that is how do you set up your live scope for the boat? There's a lot of different ways to do it. So today we're gonna to talk about some of the main setup options that you're gonna see out there. Then we're gonna talk about some of the pros and cons of each setup. And then I'm gonna talk about why I rig my live scope the way I do in my boat. And I'll talk exactly how I do it, show you a little bit of the setup that I have, and then we'll get into some more of those details. So we're gonna get right into it here and we're gonna talk about the first setup that you see fairly often. And one of the ones that's probably one of the most common is setting it up on your trolling motor. And before we get too far into it, I do wanna say that there's no necessarily right or wrong way to do it. It all depends on the style of fishing that you do. I know there's a lot of people that have very strong opinions one way or the other, but really it all boils down to your preference and what style of fishing you like to do. So on talking a little bit about the trolling motor. You know, one of the biggest pros to having it on your trolling motor is the ability to still be hands for you can still fish and still scan around without having to move a pole without having to even touch a remote it's very easy to move around and scan while you are still fishing so that's one of the biggest pros and why a lot of guys do have it on their trolling motor and when it's on your trolling motor you know it's very easy to control it's very sturdy because it's already on your trolling motor shaft so it's very easy to control you know what readout you're getting you know what angle it's going to be at so that's going to be a big positive for that the other thing that's really nice is that it's in the front of your boat so depending on the style of fishing that you like to do some people really Really like to be up in the bow of their boat and they like to be casting or pitching you know especially some bass fishermen musky fishermen being able to be in the front controlling that trolling motor with a foot pedal and having that live scope transducer on there can be very very efficient some of the cons to having it on your trolling motor is the fact that when you're spot locked or when you're trying to navigate and move to a different area it can be very hard to stay on those fish you know one of the things that i've really noticed ever since having live scope is fish move a ton i like to chase schools of walleyes around with my live scope and i notice that these schools of fish move move a lot. So if you're spot locked or if it's a really windy day and your trolling motor is trying to stay on a course or it's trying to stay spot locked, it's going to move automatically and you might lose where that group of fish is. So that's a little bit of a challenge with that trolling motor is being able to be spot locked or while you're trying to navigate, if those fish are moving, it can be very tough to stay on those fish and see where they're moving. Another thing about having it on your trolling motor is you actually have to have the trolling motor deployed, obviously, to use it. You can't be driving around scouting from spot to spot very easily. You have to deploy your trolling motor before you can even start scanning. So that is another con and takes a little bit more time when you're trying to kind of run and gun or even just scout some areas. Another thing is that you need a cable drive trolling motor in order to work with most of the mounts out there. I'm starting to see some mounts for Tarovas or for Alteras, but typically your cable drive systems are going to work best. So it limits you a little bit depending on what kind of trolling motor you have. A second option that I have seen some guys do, but I don't see it quite as much, is having that thing fixed to your transom. The transducer is fixed to your transom, just like say your 2D or your just any other sonar that you have fixed onto the back of your boat. One of the really nice things about that is the fact that it's very, very sturdy. Obviously, it's going to give you a good readout. It's not gonna get at a goofy angle. It's going to be set there and it's going to be very sturdy. And the other thing is that it's always going to be scanning. You're always gonna have access to seeing what's underneath your boat, maybe what's out in front, depending on how you have it set up. So you're constantly scanning just like your 2D sonar, and it's not something I have to take in and take out. So that's another big plus to having it on your transom. So if you're say a tiller guy and you like to run and gun and drive over schools of fish and be able to drop right on them while you're sharpshooting them, that can be a very effective method for you. And obviously the biggest con to that is you're not able to scan around. As we talked earlier, those fish are moving constantly. And if you have it in one fixed location, you're not gonna be able to scan in a 360 degree circle and see where fish are moving around your boat. So although it's nice to have it sturdy and it's nice to have a very clear picture right underneath you, it really hinders you in the fact of being able to stay on fish that are moving around you. The third option, and this is one that I see very often as well, and this is actually the one that I chose to go with, and that is having it on a separate pole. One of my favorite reasons for having it on a separate pole is the fact that no matter what you're doing with your trolling motor, no matter if you're spot locked or navigating in a different way, it's very easy to scan all the way around you and see where these different groups of fish, these different schools of fish are moving. And also for me when I'm guiding, I love having it on a separate pole because I can leave my trolling motor down and I can go hit 10 and 15, 20 spots very quickly just by running and gunning with the big motor. As I get to the spot, I drop my live scope down and I scan around over the hump or over the break or whatever it is. I can scan very quickly, pull it right back up and get moving on to the next spot without having to get out of my seat, go let my trolling motor down and put it back up. Another reason that I like it is I can have it right next to me. A 
along with all of my other electronics. So I can see my mapping, I can see my side imaging, my down imaging, my 2D sonar as well. So I can see all my electronics right out around me and it's very easy to get a whole picture of what's going on around me. Now there are some cons to this one as well. And one of the biggest ones is being that it's not hands-free. You know, a lot of times I'm having to move the pole as I'm fishing, which can sometimes get in the way of my fishing. You know, when I'm guiding, it's not as big of a deal because I'm not typically fishing anyways. Another downside is depending on the pole that you have, it's not always quite as sturdy. I know for me, when I'm going that three to five miles an hour, that's when I notice my pole is really starting to drift back, depending on how much I tighten down my ram mount. So not being able to scan at as fast of speed sometimes hurts because you're not gonna be able to cover as much water while seeing a good clear picture. And kind of a positive and a negative to having it on a separate pole is you can really put it anywhere in your boat. You know, a lot of the crappie guys like to have it up front on a separate pole, but no matter where it's at, you're gonna limit yourself a little bit to whatever's around you. I like to have it on my helm right here, but then I notice sometimes I'm getting in the way of other things things or I'm not able to cast out in this area or see over to the other side of the boat quite as well. So there's some give and take with a separate pole as well, but typically I have found for my style of fishing, I love to go with my separate pole. I have it right by my steering wheel here so I can constantly be moving around and scanning for fish. So now I'm going to kind of take my camera off here, get a little bit better light on my setup. I'm going to show you exactly how I have it kind of rigged up um, and hopefully it'll give you some ideas if you're not sure how you want to set it up or if you kind of have an idea that you want to set it up like this, but you're not really sure how to rig it. Um, I'll show you exactly how I did that here right now. So how I run my live scope setup is I have it off to my side, um, not necessarily right out in front of me. You know, I have my mapping, I have my down imaging, side imaging, 2D sonar right here. And then on my third screen is where I run my live scope. And so I keep this one off to my side because kind of when I'm moving around throughout the boat, if I need to pitch off to the other side, I can still see this screen. It's on a ram mount, so I can really change it any direction if I'm fishing out the back side of the boat. So I really like that setup, being able to have it right here. So when I'm driving around, I still can see my screen. I can be looking at my mapping. I can be looking at my 2D and I'll have it right next to me. So that's where I've set up my screen. And also the more and more screens that you add, the less space that you obviously have. So with my mapping and my side imaging, down imaging right here, I didn't really have much space on this side, but with how my boat is set up, I do have a space right here. I know a lot of uh, maybe fiberglass boats have the rail that you can put on a rail system like that. And then I can run it directly to my power as well. And so then where I run my pole actually is a little bit back behind it here. So I have my screen right here and I have my pole right behind it. And I really like it because I can kind of set it down on the back and it lays really nicely, doesn't bounce around and it's really easy for me to run and gun. So for example, when I'm driving around, I get to a spot, I can easily loosen up my ram mount, flip it down, and then I have my pole ready. So I can be looking at my screen, I can be driving around, I can be turning it around as I'm scanning and as I'm driving. The other thing is when I'm ready to go, it's really easy to loosen it up, pop it up, set it on the side, and then I'm ready to go, ready to drive around. Um, so it's really quick and it's really efficient for run and gun style fishing, which is what I like to do. Both of these are just on ram mounts. My Garmin unit, unit is on a little bit bigger ram mount. I think this one's maybe a D size ram mount. So I really like that it's so sturdy and it doesn't really have a lot of give or it won't slide if I can tighten it down a lot. My pole is on a little bit smaller size. I can't remember the size for this, but it is um, from Summit Fishing Equipment. So if you are interested in that, I'll put that in the description below. Um, but I really like it for run and gun. Um, it's really quick and really easy to kind of pop down, pop up, like I just explained. But the one downside is it's not quite as sturdy. You know, I think I could increase the size of the ram mounts and then it would just be fine. Um, but I really like this setup right here. It took me a little bit, little while to figure it out, but I like that I can have my cords tucked away and I'll show you that here in a little bit. And still a really easy and efficient way for me to have all of my setup basically right at Command Central Station right here. And this is something that I'm constantly changing. Every time I'm going out fishing, every once in a while I'll find something that I like a little bit better. So I'll move things just a little bit or change things just a little bit. Um, so this is ever evolving process and I've changed it a lot even since I first started using it. So now I'm gonna show you a little bit more detail of how exactly I set it up, you know, where I put my wires, how I kind of hid those as best as I could and give you a little bit more detail on exactly how I rig that up. So right here, like I said, I have my unit on the ram mount, my pole right there. They're both on the ram mount. And what I did is I actually was able to take out this cup holder right here see if you can see that. So I took out this cup holder and I wanted to do it with the least amount of cutting or drilling as possible. And I really just shaved this down. You can see that there a little bit. I shaved it down. Um, so that way I could put that cup holder back in and it wouldn't be wearing on those cords. I did reinforce it a little bit um, 
with some tape there so that way it wouldn't rub through and wreck those cords because sometimes you get on these edges and it can really cut through that very easily. So then I can pop my cup holder right back in and we are ready to go. It still sits fairly flush. And basically what that is, that's all of the wires that need to go down to the black box. And so that goes right down all in through there. So all those wires go down through that compartment and everything is kind of housed right in here. I have my batteries, my black box, all of that is down right in there. It's still easily accessible, but tucked out of the way just enough. And it's a space that I don't really use a lot other than for this. So it works out really nice to be able to have a couple different batteries. Um, one is an Amped and one is a Markham, I believe. Um, and that usually gives me plenty of power that I need for a day, maybe even two days, day and a half, something like that. So with that transducer, I went up in through here and it goes right in through this pole. And I actually took one, these are actually fishing rod holders right here. So you can set them in here and they sit along the edge. Um, but what I did is I took one of the plastic tubes out and that way I was accessible to get my live scope transducer cord right here. So I'll back up a little bit so you can see that. So there you can see those wires go down into that compartment, connects to the black box, transducer comes up through here and then out that rod holder hole right there. And like I said, I just took out that tube and was able to go out right through that hole. And it actually worked out really well because it was right by my transducer. So yeah, that's how I kind of hit all those wires. As you can see, not a lot of wires hanging out. There's a lot going on between all of my graphs, all of the wires, all the cords. So I wanted to clean it up as best I could, but also still have it very accessible down here to get to my batteries, to charge those up, and also be able to get to the black box. And one thing that I did want to note, if you're like me and you had the Live Scope Ice Fishing Bundle, some of the cords might not be long enough to reach depending on where you have them set up. So you might need to go to Garmin and get some of those extensions. Um, I was able to find them online. Just had to do a little bit of searching to figure out exactly which ones I need. So there you have it. That is the setup that I like to use. I know there's a lot of different ways to do it, but you just have to find what fits your fishing style. If you're already using LiveScope in your boat, how do you have it set up? Go ahead and drop that in the comments. I'm always willing to learn. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you found value in it, I would love it if you would subscribe, show your support so that way I can keep putting out more content like this. I will be hitting open water here hopefully very soon. We have Minnesota fishing opener here not too far away. I'm hoping to get up and maybe even sneak in a little sturgeon fishing here shortly. So hopefully you have some content coming at you out of the boat. Again, thanks for watching.